the film look. It's one of the most popular color grading techniques in mainstream media and with digital creators. The color and character of film are added to digital footage in order to create a familiar, nostalgic feel with viewers and to get really nice looking tones and color separation. And also mostly because it just looks so good. Since film has either been used or emulated in almost every iconic movie, using the film look naturally gives a cinematic feel to your work. So what's the best way to create it? There are a few plugins available which can help you emulate film, and you can do it manually. Today we're going to be taking a look at Dehancer. Dehancer Pro is a plugin for Resolve, Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Final Cut Pro, which was designed to add the character and imperfections of film back into your digital footage. Dehancer comes with over 60 different film profiles as well as print film options, such as Kodak 2383. The film profiles within Dehancer range from popular negatives, such as the Kodak Portra Stocks, Fuji Color, and Cinestill, as well as a wide variety of other black and white, monochrome, and exotic stocks. Other than the film color characteristics, the plugin features other tools which help bring your footage into the film space. Grain, halation, bloom, and a few other tools we will look at today are an excellent way to bring your footage to life. Dehancer reached out and asked us to make an honest review of Dehancer Pro with all of our thoughts and opinions about the plugin. If you're thinking about purchasing any products from Dehancer, you can help us out by using code JML at checkout for 10% off. Really quick before we get into the film profiles, I'll point out that I'm using the Dehancer plugin in Premiere Pro. What's cool about this plugin in Premiere is that you can actually change the color space of your footage without using a conversion LUT. This is super nice in my opinion because you don't have to deal with using multiple different layers of lumetry and everything is condensed into one tool. However, it is still recommended to do basic adjustments to your exposure, white balance, and contrast before using Dehancer. Dehancer actually allows us to select the specific camera and color space that we shot with, and we'll put our footage in the right space in order to apply the film negatives properly. Once we've selected the right camera and color profile, we are presented with over 60 different film profiles to choose from. There are way too many to cover in this video alone, but I definitely recommend that you guys test them out and experiment with the different stocks. Some of my favorites include Kodak Aerocolor, Astrum 125, Lomochrome Metropolis, and Kodak Vision 3. And like I mentioned earlier, there's a ton of different profiles which allow you to essentially make whatever look you want. After selecting the camera and color profile, there are options to change the exposure, temperature, tint, as well as turn on defringing if necessary. Some subtle adjustments to the exposure and temperature might be required once Dehancer converts the footage, so this is my first step after selecting the profile I like. In general, after I select my film profile, I don't mess with the push-pull too much. It works differently depending on what film profile you're using, so I just leave it alone. Still, I'd recommend experimenting with it to see if you can get some looks you like. Film Developer is a tool within Dehancer which allows for more in-depth control of the film emulation. Film Developer mimics the analog development process, so you can tweak the emulation based on the characteristics of the source footage. By adjusting contrast, gamma, and saturation, the film profile will work better depending on how the footage was lit, the contrast levels, and any other condition. I use Film Developer to tweak the film profile if the contrast and saturation levels aren't fitting the footage. I'll use contrast and color boost to either add or subtract contrast and saturation, and I'll use the gamma correction to shift the midtones if necessary. Also, if the contrast is right but the blacks are too crushed, I'll use the expand dropdown to lift up the blacks until they aren't clipping. Film compression is another newer tool in Dehancer, which emulates the highlight compression of film. Unlike digital sensors, film is able to absorb much more light without losing detail. This means that overexposing film, even by a few stops, doesn't lead to the extreme clipping which happens digitally. The highlight roll-off in film is much more appealing, which is what film compression recreates. Basically, the tool works by shifting the highlights into the midtones without affecting the shadows. This is a great way to ensure that your highlights aren't blown out, as well as making your footage look more analog. Compressing the image like this also makes the image more flexible for further grading. Within film compression, the adjustments that are already selected do a really good job, so there isn't really too much that I mess with other than the impact, which is the total compression. If you pull the white point down, it'll add more contrast in the compressed range, but this will lead to clipping in the highlights if you go too far. The tonal range is the range which gets selected, so putting this to 100 means everything from your highlights to your shadows will be selected. Color density adds subtle saturation into the highlights, which can look super nice depending on the composition.
The two main prints available in Dehancer are Kodak 2383 and Fujifilm 3513. The print tool works by taking the film profile and printing it onto either 2383 or 3513. The other options to print to are Cineon Film Log and Kodak Endura Glossy Paper. The linear option doesn't select any print medium, only the film profile is applied. It is also possible to not select a film profile and only use 2383 for a final look. Using different combinations of film profiles and prints, or either, basically means there's an infinite combination of looks that you can create in Dehancer. The print films have a few extra tools to dial in the print look. The target white slider acts like the print white balance, so you can give the print a cooler or warmer look. I really don't touch the exposure slider in the print tool because I dial in my exposure using the input, but I will tweak the contrast and color density until I get the look I want. Color head within Dehancer is your printer lights. The subtractive color correction responds accordingly to the print film that you've selected and is a great way to add more creative tones and improve your color separation. If the film print ends up shifting the color, I'll use the color head tool to fix it. The sliders act like printer lights, so it's really easy to fix the color if there's strong tinting. Also, the tone sliders make it simple to add some cool tones to the shadows to accentuate a teal orange look. The grain tool scans each frame of your footage and then creates a grain map of the highlights, midtones, and shadows. Then, using some dehancer magic, it selects parts of the initial frame and rebuilds the complete image on top of the grain map. This is the most accurate way to apply grain into digital footage because the grain in actual film is what creates the image. I think the dehancer grain is easily one of the best out there. With the grain, the three main sliders I adjust are size, amount, and film resolution. Size affects how big each grain particle is and amount adjusts the density. Film resolution makes the grain either very sharp or very soft. Personally, I like the softer grain because it covers up the digital sharpness and it really sells the film look. I like to turn the chrome all the way down so there's no color in the grain, and sometimes I'll change the film type to positive which creates a more subtle grain. The only real downside to the grain is that it's a really heavy effect and will definitely bog down your computer in render times. To put it simply, bloom is the glowing effect that appears around lights and bright objects in the frame. Bloom is an optical byproduct which originates in the lens and is exaggerated by the film emulsion. The effect is most pronounced with vintage lenses and small format films. The default settings with the bloom almost create a diffusion filter effect on the footage. It really softens out the harsh edges and skin tones, and the glow around lights looks good. I like to add a little more diffusion and turn down the overall impact which makes a really nice effect. If I only want to add bloom to the specular highlights, I'll use the source limiter to deselect the midtones. Halation is a film emulsion effect visible as a subtle red glow around bright light sources, specular highlights, and contrasting edges. Other than grain, halation is one of the most important aspects of film to emulate, and the halation within Dehancer is really good. I feel like it's really easy to start ruining the image with halation, so I try to keep my adjustments really subtle. I keep the amplify pretty low and slowly move the diffusion, but I'm careful with the global diffusion so I don't start getting red tint in all of the highlights. The hue slider swings the halation color from red to orange, which I'll sometimes use to make the effect stand out more. Since the halation effect doesn't normally work against blue colors, the blue compensation slider will make it stand out against cooler tones. Other than also adjusting the overall impact, that's as much as I'll do with the tool. Specular highlights and high contrast edges are where halation is supposed to be visible, so it's probably a better option to adjust the footage itself rather than add halation where it isn't meant to be. Gateweave simulates the wobble in film as it runs through a scanner. By enabling this effect in Dehancer, your footage gets a slightly jittery look to it, which might be something you're looking for. Film Breath adds a subtle shift to the color, contrast, and exposure for each frame, which is a filmed effect that shows up in old, expired, and small format films. Enabling these effects gives your film emulation a more vintage, old school film vibe, which may or may not be what you're looking for. Whenever I want to use them, I don't change the default settings because they're not effects that are really supposed to stand out. The built-in vignette actually looks really good a lot of the time without needing to do any adjustments, which can save time building power windows. The false color tool is actually really handy for checking exposure throughout the frame, even when you aren't creating a film emulation. It helps a lot being able to see exactly where the highlights are sitting and how your adjustments affect the image exposure. 
I want to point out that Dehancer has recently released a mobile app which utilizes almost all of the features of the desktop plugin and can also edit photos. The fact that you have access to over 60 film profiles, presets, and the other tools within Dehancer on your mobile device is just insane. The UI is actually really solid to work with and it is actually really easy to make good looking film grades on both iPhone photos and videos. There are a ton of presets that are created by the development team and they're basically a one click grade, but you can also go into the presets and tweak them how you want. Overall, I'd say it's easily one of the best solutions to mobile color grading. After using Dehancer for the past month and getting to know the plugin, I'm honestly really impressed with it. There are an insane amount of film profiles and looks to go with, especially with the print options, and all of the tools are really intuitive. The Dehancer team are always working on adding more film profiles and tools, which give even more options for color grading. It's easily one of the best ways to create technically accurate film emulations and film looks, which aren't possible in the editing software alone. I highly recommend you head over to the Dehancer blog, which has articles explaining pretty much every feature in Dehancer Pro. The articles are written by the developers and go into way more detail than I can in this video. The link's in the description. I would definitely recommend Dehancer if you can deal with the downsides. First, the $400 price tag is pretty rough, especially if you're a DaVinci user and are spending more money on the plugin than the software itself. Even though you can use our code and get 10% off, it's still a big investment for a color grading plugin. The plugin is also super demanding on your computer. Render times can get pretty bad if you're using Dehancer on a full sequence, and it doesn't help that Premiere is just slow and buggy to begin with. The sliders in the effect page are really laggy also, which can be annoying for fine adjustments. However, if you are serious about emulating film and you're not concerned with the price, Dehancer is definitely one of the best tools to use in your work. Thank you for watching, and thanks again to Dehancer for making this video possible. If you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel for more content like this.